So this is really a bonus video. I just want to do something weird with DOM manipulation. I'm kind of going to just make up on the fly, although I did make an example like this a couple weeks ago. Uh, I haven't looked at it since then, so hopefully this is going to work out. And what I want to show you how to do is to take interface elements that normally you would ask the user to manipulate, like move a slider or type some text into a text input box. And I want to show you how to just control those, pro control those things programmatically as if they're like there's a zombie controlling your computer. So <clears throat> first of all, I have a P5 sketch here. I have the P5 editor. So, uh, this is sort of like a bit of a standalone video, so some of you might be coming to it from not having seen P5 before. Go to p5js.org, download the editor, look at the reference. You can use that for this uh, quick little project. So let's give it a, let's hit this button. We can see there's absolutely nothing appearing in the browser because I haven't added anything. Now, let's create a variable called slider. And I'm going to say slider equals create slider. And remember, when you create a slider, you need a minimum and a maximum and a starting range. I don't really, it doesn't really matter so much. So I'm in this case, so I'm going to create a slider with minimum goes from zero, maximum goes to 100, and it starts at 50. Uh, it's very loud outside, so I'm going to close the window. And I'm back. You can see the slider is there. And now I can do what anyone would normally do with a slider. I can slide it back and forth. I could use the slider to control myself. Watch. Nobody cares that I'm doing this, but it amused me for a second. OK, so uh, that's normally what you're doing. You would tie the slider to an alpha value or to some parameter in a flocking system, whatever kind of creative coding thing you're doing today. But what if you wanted to actually set the value of that slider? So one thing you can actually do is, OK, so if you want to get, sorry, if you want to get the value of the slider, you say slider.value. And so let me make it between 0 and 255. And I could see now I have no canvas. Let me create the canvas just so it's there. And you can see now that the canvas is there. And as I move the slider, it's changing the background color. This is, again, what you might normally do. Now, Another way I could change the value of the slider is actually to just call the value function, but give it an argument. So the argument I'm going to give it is the number right now, 151. So you can see that now the slider, even though it started at 50, as soon as draw executed, I set its value to 151. Well, draw is animating, looping over and over again. What if I made that some variable, like for example, var x equals 151 and slider.value x and x equals x plus some random amount between like negative 5 and 5. Now let me run that and you can see, look, the slider is moving on its own. I have my first zombie slider. There it is, just moving around. I don't ever have to operate the computer again. It's just going to do it for me. Great. So, uh, but let's go a little bit further with this. First of all, let's use something called a sine wave. I would, uh, I will link below to some other video where I talk about sine waves. <laughs> I'm saying I'm going to link below. I better do it. Write in the comments if I didn't do it, and I'll add it. But let's use a sine wave. So let's say instead that x equals the value, var x equals the value of the of a sine of something, sine of some angle. So now I need a variable called angle, and I need it equal to zero. Now. I might as well take just a brief moment to come over here to this whiteboard, which I said I wasn't going to need, and talk about what you get out of the sine function. I said I was going to link to another video, but I feel obligated to just offer a quick explanation. If you've ever seen a drawing of the sine function, camera show, this is not going well, the camera shut off. If you've ever seen a drawing of the sine function, it looks something like this. Uh, the, range, uh, uh, the range goes from between 1 to negative 1. I should start over, but I'm not going to. Um, the range goes between 1 and negative 1, the x-axis being this angle that's moving through time in a way that you can think. So depending on what the value of the angle is, I'm going to get between 1 and negative 1. So here, that was, that was like the worst explanation ever. Just <laughs> go to the thing that's, that explains the sine function if you haven't looked at it before. Um, so what I want to do is get this, the sine of some angle. And if I do that, it's stuck there at the bottom, right? The result of the sine function is always a value between negative 1 and 1. 
Now, there happens to be another function in P5 called the map function, and I definitely have a video that's only about the map function. I'll also link to that below. But what I can do with the map function is I can say, hey, the sine function goes between negative 1 and 1. That's the range of the sine function, but the range of my slider is between 0 and 255 or 0 and 100, whatever it was between 0 and 255. So map the result of the sine function, which is somewhere between negative 1 and 1, to the, between 0 and 255. So now I'm going to do that. Oh, unexpected number, line 12. I don't, I don't see, oh, because uh, I forgot a comma here. There we go. Uh, you can see, ah, so sine of 0 happens to be the value 0, which then happens to be halfway between negative 1 and 1, which is halfway, which gets mapped to 127 about. And you can see it's now in the middle. Now, what if I took that angle and incremented it over time? I could maybe get the slider to oscillate nicely. Angle plus equals 0 0.01. Now, the angle, the unit of measurement is in radians. And in that other set of videos that I'm linking to, there'll be an explanation of that. <laughs> and you can see, look at that. This nice little, the slider's moving nicely, slowly, and it's coming to the end. and it, eases off and you know we could maybe make that move a little bit faster by incrementing the angle a bit more each frame and now I've got this slider that's like oscillating automatically it's kind of like dancing <laughs> I'm trying to do it with it but I can't so this was fun and all well and good but let's do something more with this first of all forget about this silly canvas thing that was nice to be able to see that the slider is still actively controlling the canvas but forget about that, forget about background. What if instead I make an array of sliders and I were to say for var i equals 0, i is less than 10, i plus plus, and I'm going to make all those sliders in an array. So make all those sliders in an array, and then let's do exactly the same thing down here. Let's set all of their values. to the value of this sine function. And here we go. And I run it. Look at that. All of the sliders are now oscillating back and forth. Isn't that lovely? And then, I don't know, 10 didn't seem like very many. Let's make 50 of them. Oh, oh and I, I, I hard coded that. I should really say sliders.length. Let's make 50 of them. You can see all of them are moving. I, I don't know. I'm just going crazy. Let's make 100 of them. I want to fill the page with sliders. You can see, now I've got 100 sliders dancing back and forth. Now, interestingly enough, if I'm working with a sine wave and I have one thing oscillating back and forth, and I have another thing oscillating back and forth, and I have another thing oscillating back and forth, what if each one of those was just a little bit behind the other one? Right? So when this one is over here, this one is over here, and then this one's over here, and then this one gets to the end and comes back, and then this one gets to the end, there's just a little bit of offset. So they're kind of like dancing with each other in a way. And we could, we could play some music and dance the, slide, dance the night away with the sliders. <laughs> That's what I do. By the way, I have no social life, so I go home and I dance the night away with sliders. Think about that for a minute, why don't you? Then donate. There's no donate button. but. <laughs> I don't know what you would donate to, to the cause of sad dancing slider people. But the point is, what if I could get each one slightly offset from the other one? Maybe I could have another variable. Uh, I could say offset equals zero, angle plus offset, and then offset plus equals 0.02345, making that number up. Doesn't really matter. The poo 5. The point is, I want each one of those to oscillate based on that angle, but one of them should be 0 0.025 ahead, and the other one should be 0 0.05 ahead, and the other one should be 0 0.075 ahead. I think I'm doing the math right. Let's just see if that works. There we go, dancing the night away with the slide. So you can see here, I'm just zamba controlling these sliders. They're all slightly offset from each other. I could play around, like what if I really make them offset from each other? Uh, whoa, now I've got this crazy pattern here um, where all the sliders, and I could arrange them in a different way. I could have them like make a little picture. I could all use them to control things. I could style them. So there's lots of possibilities. Or the point that I'm making this video is to say, I don't know anything about the web or design or how to make anything look right or do anything practical, but 
Uh, so I'm sometimes trying weird things out and things happen. But the, the point of what I'm saying, uh, that's not the point of what I'm saying. The point of what I'm saying is the browser could be an experimental canvas for you. What kinds of things exist as elements in the browser that we use every day in these standard ways? And what might happen if you subvert those standard ways and do all sort and do different things with them that might not be expected? This is a very simplistic, almost sort of like first approach to that, but it's something that's worth looking into uh, and playing around with. I, I want to keep doing stuff to it, but I'm, I'm like stopping myself. The other thing that you might think about doing is having a you know, t text uh, input box and how you can use the value function to set what's in the text. How might you make it appear that someone's typing into that text input box um, without there being a person there and suddenly hitting a submit button? That, that, you know, so how might you make a page feel as if it's interacting with itself? Um, and, you know, you could also do something when you move one slider. Oh, we should try this. Okay, so let's stop this. <laughs> okay. What are we, you stop the video now and go do some, go outside and play frisbee or whatever and go socialize with your friends or have a nice cup of chamomile tea to relax, meditate, all these things are much more important than what I'm going to do next. But if you're still here, I'm going to do one more thing with this. What if I have them all move when I move one of them, slightly offset from the one I'm moving? I don't even know if that would work. I shouldn't try to do this right now. This is going so well. But I'm, I'll just add this one. So for example, uh, Let's say what I want to do is handle just the first slider, the input event, first uh, uh, adjust sliders. So if you remember, the input event is an event that gets fired any time there is a change to the value of a DOM element such as a slider. So I'm, I don't need this uh, draw function anymore. I'm going to rename this to adjust sliders. And I'm going to say start from slider 1. Sliders I value sliders index 0 dot by making this simple. So here what I've done now is I've said any time you change sliders 0, the first element in the array, call this function adjust sliders, loop through all the other ones starting with 1, and change their value to the value of the first one. So here we go. And I can say any time I move this, they all move. But so I'm going to leave that at that. You could like, take this. What if when you move, they all kind of like move sporadically, but kind of like with that one? What if when you move, it causes them to sort of ripple? First one moves, then the next one moves, then the next one moves, and you get this kind of like dancing. This is dancing with sliders. So how could you, if you actually interact with one and it makes the other ones do something? Uh, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm kind of off the beaten path here. Think of your own, write, you're in the comments to wherever you're seeing this video, write some other ideas of things that might be more interesting than what I'm thinking of. I would love to make some more examples in this direction or maybe share things that you've made in that way. So um, this concludes uh, many, many, many videos that I've made about DOM manipulation, HTML, and CSS with the P5GS library. I'm sure I missed a lot of things. There are a bunch of these videos where things didn't work or I was like kind of confused. Send me your feedback, write your letters of complaint to Brian Williams, I mean uh, me, um, uh, here at ITP. Uh, the address is 721 Broadway. I think that's okay to mention, it's on the internet. Um, uh, you can send something in the mail, I like things in the mail. Um, and uh, I will, uh, the next section of videos that I'm hoping to make, possibly tomorrow, but definitely next week if not tomorrow, is about working with data. So how do you work with a data file that you might load that has information in it? How do you connect to an API like a weather API or the New York Times API or this wonderful API called the WordNik API that's one of my favorite APIs? So that's what I'm going to look at in the next set of videos that I get to uh, next. So thanks for tuning in, which sounds ridiculous. And um, I don't know, I'm going to stop now. Thanks. Okay.